Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and hey, did you know that the internet is like a little potato door into other people's heads? Yeah, like one person is going to understand. M Morgan, Morgan on Twitter misread uh, something I wrote, and that was the interpretation he got out of it. So, you know what? Uh, take it for what it is. Alex is not actually with us today. Uh, he is battling a tooth. His tooth is unfortunately inside his head, and that's usually a terrible place to be fighting a tooth. Uh, and uh, he would love to best it, but besting such a thing is a, a long and expensive process. So he is just trying to cope at the moment. Hopefully he wins against said tooth. Uh, I am wishing him the best of luck with that. And with any luck, we will hear from him uh, later this week. That is all right, because we were just going to do a shorter episode where we talked a little bit about Gen Con. And uh, everyone is probably very excited about Gen Con, which will be starting toward the end of the week and uh, features basically everyone you have ever heard of. So there's something fun. Of course, you will not see us there. Uh, we never end up going because of many reasons. Money, uh, time, and availability are usually the big ones. Additionally, we figured since it is going to be toward the end of the week and we won't have a lot of information about some of the big things that are coming out of Gen Con, uh, we are probably going to talk about it much more in depth on our live episode this coming Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. For those of you who are not aware, uh, we do a Delve Live the first Saturday of each month. You know, anyone could show up. Uh, it's uh, usually us and then uh, some of our regulars. But, you know, we, we have some surprise guests that pop in. We don't schedule anything. Uh, so if you want to, you can always join us on Discord or on Twitch. Uh, or if you uh, don't get there live, it obviously comes on the feed as well. So you can listen to the whole thing. There are usually quite long, sprawling episodes. But we have a good time, and that's the important thing. Gen Con has always eluded me for uh, many reasons. One of the big ones was that I had no idea what Gen Con actually meant. Uh, generally content, genuinely concerned, genetically contiguous. At one point, I thought maybe it meant Geneva Convention, and I got very, very confused. Although, it turns out, I was probably closer with that one than anything else. Because uh, the history of Gen Con, uh, as I started to look up, started to research, from Gen Con's own website, tells about uh, Gary Gygax, who of course was the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons, founding this convention back in 1968 in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Gen Con is actually a shortened version of the original name Lake Geneva Wargaming Convention. So, actually, Geneva and Convention were the correct abbreviations for that. Who would have thunk it? Gygax originally held it at the uh, Lake Geneva Horticultural Hall, and uh, it was, uh, you know, originally meant for wargaming, as the name suggests, and it kind of expanded out from there. So it's been five decades since then, and it is now the longest-running and best-attended convention for tabletop gaming in North America. As you can probably guess, since the Gen in Gen Con stands for Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, it makes perfect sense that it is now held at the Indiana Convention Center in Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> Maybe they should just call it, like, IndyCon now. They moved from Lake Geneva, so, uh, you know what, it's, it's history. That's what it is. That's all that matters. But then the other thing that usually eludes me when it comes to Gen Con Origins, any of the big tabletop conventions, is that I don't really know what big things we are supposed to be seeing. And so I usually end up uh, acquiescing to the internet and looking at any of the games media that might be uh, aware of some of the big things coming out. But the thing is, is that unlike an E3, for instance, yeah, it's not like you have a lot of uh, conferences where the big publishers come out and talk about all their new product lines, uh, which, you know, is just something that I'm used to from the video game side of things. 
since the uh, the gaming market is very heavily influenced by like independent uh, designers and publishers, people who actually build their products from scratch themselves, you don't really have that much in terms of like those big announcement panels. What I usually see for like the big panels are uh, a lot of uh, people that are actually talking about specific subjects and uh, a lot of like live plays. For instance, if we were to look at some of the events for Gen Con 2019, we're looking at things like uh, assistive technology for gaming, uh, board games that empower students to save our planet, conventions for fun and profit, creating your own puzzle hunt, games and science classes, gaming in schools, how do I build my board game collection at my library? Actually, I'm interested in that one. How I started a D&D club in my school. And then there's a lot of live plays that go on for about four hours featuring things like Call of Cthulhu, Cyberpunk, Genesis, etc. Um, but, uh, but it's not like, oh, hey, now let me show you all of the wonderful things that are coming in Shadowrun. Because we do know that there is stuff like the the Shadowrun Sixth World that we should be able to see, but so much of it is, uh, you know, in the little nooks and crannies of this convention. It's not like the big flashy names up on screen that I'm familiar with with the you know video game conventions like E3. It it doesn't really work that way, and so trying to kind of suss out what the big things are going to be feels like it's going to be very dependent on who you are and what you personally see. I think I would pretty much get overwhelmed if I ever went. I'm kind of scared to. The only convention that Alex and I have ever been to was the Boston Festival of Indie Games a few years back, and um, even that, although it is one day, uh, you can't see everything. You just <laughs> you can't get to everything at one time. And so it's just, if that's overwhelming, I hate to think what Gen Con is. Yeah, you have like four days to figure it out, but still, it just doesn't feel like enough time, especially when you see just the hundreds of things that are supposed to be on display. So what I'm really interested in is seeing the stories come out from not just the publishers, but actually from the people who attend. That's actually what I find most fascinating is when just, you know, the, your, your regular average Joe or Jane on the street goes to Gen Con and finds in one of these small alleys uh, at the convention hall this game that they've never heard of but really gets them excited. And it's that kind of thing that you don't really see from like a similar video game convention like an E3. I'm very happy to say that there are quite a few people that we know who are going to be there in one capacity or another, and we wish them luck uh, showing off their games and being part of their respective organizations. And I am hoping to hear back from some of them about the fun things that they actually saw, because uh, when we get around to our live episode when Gen Con is in full swing, I am hoping to be able to talk more about things that we have actually heard about. Uh, because right now it is kind of a mystery. I usually don't have much information about conventions uh, in tabletop markets beforehand. I have to say that that is one thing that if I could change anything about the you know tabletop convention scene, it would be having a, a better, straightforward place where I could get delineated information uh, about what is going to be there because it's it's kind of hard to suss out that information. It's usually kind of dense. Uh, even on if you look at Gen Con's own website, they do have a list of things that are going on, but it's just like it's a laundry list of just all this stuff, and I can't really tell what is where and and what is going to be in the main halls and what are presentations and things like that. I get a little bit confused by that whole thing. And uh, if you ever see a map of the convention floor, eh, that's not going to help you either. <laughs> it's it's going to get real confusing for you. It's the reason why usually when I see people talk about it uh, online, say, hey, we're going to be showing our game off at Gen Con, they like circle specifically and, and like list the specific place where they are going to be on the floor because otherwise good luck. You're not going to just like pass by it and go, oh, right. <laughs> Drinking quest. There we are. <laughs> no. Come and see the captain is dead. 
sure, you got to tell me exactly where you are, because <laughs> I'm not going to just randomly stumble across you. Ain't going to happen. Sorry. That would be something that I'd like to see. If I could get any ideas about, like, where I could find, you know, clear-cut information about big events, uh, you know, sleeper hits, stuff like that, that you can expect, uh, especially afterward, would also be very nice, a little bit of a post-roundup. I'll be looking forward to seeing that at some point. I know that that kind of thing is especially difficult with the tabletop market if we're really doing compare and contrast with, like, video games. Because with video games, you can actually do, like, trailers. And then you can do trailer breakdowns, and you can, like, see gameplay in a visual medium, and you just can't do that with tabletop very well. But I'm really hoping at some point uh, you know, people in the tabletop market figure out a way to kind of do something similar to that. For now, uh, that is really all I had to say and uh, all that we really have to, to go on at this point. Hopefully we'll have a lot more to say when we get to our live episode. Again, that's going to be on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. That I've figured that much out. Learn time zones, folks. If you are at Gen Con or are following stuff that is happening there and have something really exciting that you wanted to share with us, please do. There are a myriad of ways that you can contact us. Of course, you can always find us on our email. That is usually where a lot of people who especially want to be on the show have contacted us, and that's delvpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, but of course, you can also find us on Twitter at delvpodcast. You can find us on our Discord channel, uh, and you can even check us out on our Facebook group, which is also Delvcast. There are a myriad of ways to contact us. We're not hard to find. If you want to see everything that we do, or if you just want to respond in the actual episode itself, there's a great place you can do that over at Delvcast.com. And you can even leave comments in the posting description itself. While you're there, why don't you check out our Patreon Go over there, and you can even find extended episodes and some of our draft materials for different projects that we worked on. So all of that is available. Uh, even for a whole dollar a month, you can get that. In addition to finding Delve Podcast on Twitter, you can also find me and Alex. I am at Citanium. Alex is at EXP Limited. And, of course, if you want to make sure that you can get the podcast as soon as it releases, do not forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or any other podcast app that you prefer, because pretty much we're on everything, so don't worry about it. And with that, I want to just uh, say uh, good luck to all of the lovely people that are going to be attending uh, Gen Con, the, the Lake Geneva war gaming convention held in indianapolis i just find that funny i don't know why <laughs> sorry this is why i will never be invited to fun things because i make these kinds of snarky comments but come on folks really think about that for a second it come on all right everybody thank you for listening we'll see you on the next episode bye <laughs>